past and present, I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Welcome to the 2023 annual Talking Prisoner meet and greet, an event by the fans, for the fans. So good to see you all, really happy to see you all. You all know who I am obviously, so we've got an exciting afternoon planned for everyone. We're going to bring the cast out in a moment for a Q&A, and also any questions that you have for the cast, we'll do a Q&A for the cast and the fans. We're also going to do a quiz talking prison, uh, sorry, a prisoner quiz by Tim Burns, the director of Bronya Boys and a lot of other stuff who you all know. He's going to do the quiz and we're going to try and fit in a live interview with Badge McMillan who played Cass Parker, of course. So we've got a lot planned and if you have any questions or need anything, please ask me or see my amazing fiance who's over at the table there. I just want you all to have a fun afternoon. Just yeah, just enjoy yourself and uh, whatever you need, please let me know. Grace, oh yeah, great, yeah, Grace. Hopefully. <laughs> now today we also got a photographer as well who's doing photos. Adam's just over there. Put your see Adam just standing there. If you want any photos taken as well with Adam, just please let him know, and we'll have them up on the website so you can download them at any time. And we're also videoing today's event as well for the fans that are watching all over the. World, Canada, UK, America. So that's uh, Hayden just over there who's going to be doing some video as well. Any questions? Now, who's first time here with the event? Okay, amazing. I'm just going to bring someone over quickly. I know last year we did this, but we'll do it again this year. We actually have a cast member sitting amongst you. And I'm going to just bring her out quickly. She's going to hate me, but just for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Melinda Watts. Okay, Melinda can come on over. Sorry, Melinda. Now, Melinda played, do you remember the flashback scene with a young Jennifer Hartley in the house? Do you remember that scene? Well, that was Melinda playing that part. It was me. Where was that? I know we, we, we did touch on this, but where was that shot that, that scene? Um, did you get to meet Jenny Lovell who played Jennifer Hartley? Yes, I did. And she was a lovely actress. And I'm wondering, have you found her, Matt? Have you managed Not to get in touch? I would love to see her again. She was such... Um, she played Bloody Storm. Possibly. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, probably right. Very okay. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Well, look, she was a very inspiring actress to be able to play with, and she was there because as soon as they shot my scene, they shot her scene, and uh, the um, beautiful actress who played the grandma, whose name was goes out of my head, and I'm talking uh, in front of everyone. Aileen Britton. <laughs> yes, Aileen Britton. She was there as well. Beautiful, inspiring actors. Wow. Loved it. Yeah. And what was it like being at that age playing such like an emotional scene like that? Well, it was challenging. I had to train myself a little bit, even for the audition, because I remember, you know, that in, back in those days, they saw so many hundreds and thousands of photos of, of kids that were sent in through all the agents involved with TV. And they look for a, they're after a look. And they did see that I had a resemblance to um, the proper Jennifer Hartley. And um, so they asked me in to audition for it. But you, you do need, you know, you weren't trained much back then in, in TV. You really needed some oomph. <laughs> you needed to be able to work it a little bit on your own. 
and I did. I remember rehearsing that outside in the backyard because it was a bit loud for the TV, that scream at the end, I hate you, and the tears and everything. I, I did build myself up to it, you know, and then I, I got through the audition and I loved it and I was thrilled. <laughs> Exactly, I can say. Exactly, I've been part of Prisna. <laughs> That's my uh, really good show. Try to bring you up like that, I didn't tell you. Now, just before we start, we've also got Rob from the Geelong Jail, who runs the Old Geelong Jail, is here with us, and he's kindly let us have some Wentworth uniforms on display. So there are some original uniforms, inmate uniforms, over here in the corner, which you're welcome to get photos with later. But uh, where's Rob? Rob's over there. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. And get down to the Geelong Jail if you haven't been. It's an amazing place. Check it out. And uh, there's ghost tours and all sorts of things happening there. And uh, really appreciate it, Rob. Who's ready to meet the cast? Yeah. Well, uh, the stellar line we have today. We're going to bring out first Raylene Pierce, who played Phyllis Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. by Tim Burns. Great to see you anywhere. You can sit wherever you like. Okay, Babs McMillan, who played Cass Parker. Still got her name tags and everything on the inside. It's uh, yeah, amazing to have that item here. Next is Anna Hoori, who played Patty Lawson. <laughs> Anna's first time at our event, and also Babs and Raylene. Grab a seat. Next is Louise Lanay, who played Sandy Edwards. She's alive. She's alive. <laughs> Welcome, Louise. So good to have you here. Come through and grab a seat. Through here. Everyone's shocked you're alive. In conspiracy theories. Some days I'm shocked. We're going to talk about that. Um, and next is Susan Gurren who played Barbara Fields. She's also alive. <laughs> First time at a prisoner event. Welcome. Come through. So good to see you. You still look the same. Fantastic. And last but not least, the head of the department, Ted Douglas. Yeah. Ian Smith. Yeah. He wasn't arrested. He's here. Come yeah. through. Everyone's asking what's next. Okay, so good to see you. Thank you, mate. Such a pleasure to have you here. All of you. The briefcase. We just got another round of applause for everyone. For Raylene, Babs, Anna, Louise, Susan, and Ian. Fantastic. Now, before we all start, where are you all, what, what part of Australia have you all come from? Who's from Melbourne? Just about everyone. <laughs> What about Sydney? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Queensland, <laughs> Brisbane, Adelaide, Connor. Connor's over. Connor. 
I've got to read something from Connor because Connor's been a fan since he was nine, watching prison at the same age as I was as well. I hope Connor doesn't mind me doing this, but he was not sure if he was going to get here today, and he's such a dedicated fan. But he sent me a message, hi Matt, oh my god, today's been a day, this is yesterday. I ended up doing a Darwin return, got off my plane 20 minutes ago, ran into my car in the rain to grab my bag. The car park's a 15 minute walk, I ran back, now I'm sitting at the gate ready to board my flight to Melbourne with three minutes to spare. Don't know how I did it, I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, Connor. So, <laughs> dedication. Anyone from Perth? No one from Perth? Northern Territory? Tasmania, there we go. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Now, we're just gonna do a bit of a Q and A between us. I know I've covered a lot of things in prior interviews on the Talking Prison channel, so I've tried to come up with a few things that we haven't. And then we'll do a, uh, fans are all welcome to ask any questions you like as well. Then we'll break for food and drinks and, and photos and things like that. Now Susan, this is your first time here at a prisoner event. It is. And I had to be a private detective to find you, to do your interview. <laughs> you were the best of us <laughs> <laughs> Finally found you. Now, you're a bit overwhelmed with, you saw all the, oh sorry, there's a microphone in there, sorry. Your YouTube video, the interview that we did with you has had over 99 comments and thousands of views and a lot of the fans said you haven't given yourself enough recognition for the part that you played as Barbara Fields. <laughs> yeah, I just can't believe that. Um, yeah, well, I, I love playing the part, and uh, why did I put myself down too much? Did... Yeah, 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 sort of, yeah. <laughs> it was a good role. It was a good role. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a very uh, interesting role. She, uh, yeah, completely different to my sort of character, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, you came in episode 305. Sorry, 300. So it was five episodes before you actually got to the prison you were playing at the shoe factory. What was it like being shooting those sort of five episodes before you got into the actual prison? Did you meet the cast prior to...? No, I didn't meet the cast at all. Um, I didn't meet anyone. First day, really, I just came straight into the green room. Uh, I only had my script and, uh, yeah, no, so I... I was very, very nervous. I was very, very young. It's intimidating, isn't it? It's very. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, do I do I actually need the microphone? No, no actually, no. Me. Can everyone yeah. hear with that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No yeah. problem. Yeah. And then episode three hundred five, you came in with Anna Hubri, who played Patty Lawson. Do you do you guys remember working together in that first episode? I remember very much so. Yeah, we were just talking about that actually because Anna was a very shy girl. <laughs> I'm very feisty. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you think of your character, Barbara Fields? Uh, well, she was an interesting character. I would have liked to have seen where, she, if they didn't kill her off, <laughs> where she would have gone from there if she didn't die in the fire. So. I was very sad to die. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the Great um, Wentworth Fires, it's, it's a really fantastic period of prison. And you also wrote a lot of those episodes. I did, yes, yes. And I was accused of um, causing the fire because just, <laughs> no, it was. Um, just after we had our, no, just before we had our fire in the show, the women's prison in Melbourne had a fire as well. Oh, really? Really, and we were accused of giving them the idea. Oh, wow. Yeah, which wasn't true. I mean, God. Should we have Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that was a really big cliffhanger that, that year because, I mean, obviously back then there's no social media, internet, you couldn't look things up, so you had to wait until next year and no one really knew if yeah. Joan Ferguson was going to make it out of the prison. Yes. So what were your ideas at the time of writing those episodes? Like the, the well, you had to be dreadfully, dreadfully careful of what you wrote. You mustn't give, in any of the writing, you mustn't give the audience any ideas of self-harm. You mustn't give them any ideas of how to commit a crime. We were so, and you mustn't say anything nasty than bugger. <laughs> what they say now, my God. I, 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 
wish, I just wish I had that freedom in those days because, let's face it, it was about prison. Yeah. And, you know, it's not full of the nicest people. <laughs> and as Lizzie Birdsworth said once, this bloody place is full of crooks. <laughs> And that's actually a group question I've got for all of you. Uh, just a memory about Sheila, because everyone asks about Sheila, and uh, you know, unfortunately she's passed on. But have you all got something you could share about Sheila? Yeah. You all, you all did work with her. Mm. It was hard. It was hard. I was um, first and foremost with the show. I was the script editor, and I, I, the only reason I ended up playing the parts that I played was because actors didn't turn up on the day. <laughs> and everyone in the office, I was the only actor in the office, and they turned to me, oh, oh God, what am I going to do this time? And uh, they'd send me tearing down to the studio because the actor hadn't turned up half an hour before he was supposed to walk uh, in front of the camera. Um, well, why didn't I start this story? This is the worst part of our things. <laughs> Talk about Sheila Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Anyway, my job was to edit the scripts and rewrite if anything was wrong. Well, Sheila went away on holidays once, and uh, while she was away, we wrote uh, a story about her being married. Do you remember that, when she was supposed to get married? Yes. Yes, because yes. uh, for the life of me, I can't remember how that story ended up now. Uh, anyway, she came back and objected strongly to, no, somebody in the cast made her object strongly to the, to the story, anyway she did, and uh, consequently I had to rewrite five weeks of scripts, which was ten hours of television. I didn't love her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't, <laughs> but, uh, but my God, it was wonderful to see her take off in front of the camera. Yeah, was, wasn't it? Yes. Was. Do you have a uh, story about Sheila around that you no. can share? Um, she was fabulous at telling stories, actually. And she told me a, a couple once that I think she was jealous her husband liked this ballerina. And so she said, oh, I can do it. Put her leg up on the fireplace and couldn't get it down. <laughs> <laughs> there was another one where there was a competition about who had the biggest mouth. Because Sheila had quite a wide mouth and she took a tennis ball with her. <laughs> Do you have a story that you can share? Oh, force of nature. She yeah. truly, she truly was. And I mean, I thought Lizzie was a brilliant creation, fabulous character. Um, and I remember when the, the beautiful Judith McBurney arrived to play Pixie, and uh, with all that beautiful fadeness that was Judy anyway, she had that slightly deafy touch about herself as a delightful, delightful, sweet person. And she, Sheila turned to me one day in the green room and um, Jude had been on set for only about a week or so. And she said to me, because we've worked together, now he's going back to be alive. Jude and I have met on Young Doctors. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Steve Jones. Yes. Oh no, I have that off. <laughs> and and yeah, you remember that? And yes, I have that off. Oh, there you go. <laughs> So, you know, we went way, 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 way back. And it was just gorgeous to see her, and I loved her then, and you know, she was the sweetest, sweetest person. But because Sheila, you know, Sheila was a woman of and such enormous life experience and people experience, you know, she'd be everywhere, done everything. She was an extraordinary woman. And I remember her saying to me in the green room one day after Judith had done one of her things and whirled out to go on set, you know, and we were just sitting in the green room, and she looked at me and she said, is she really that nice? <laughs> <laughs> she, really she really was. And I said to her, yes, darling, she really is that nice. That what you're seeing is exactly what you get. She was a honey. Yeah. She really was. Yeah. What about you, Anna? Well, I remember my very first day on the, walking into that green room. Um, so it was my first day. I was only 21. And 
from Sydney, so I didn't know Melbourne at all. And I walked into the green room, and all the cast were on set filming, so the green room was empty. So you know, I sort of looked around, and I chose a seat in the corner, and I sat down, and was waiting for all the actresses to come off set, and and they came off set, and Sheila walked straight up to me, and she just stood in front of me. I've never met her before, <laughs> looking up at her legs, and she's just staring down at me, and said, hello, hello, I'm Anna, I'm playing Patty Lawson, and she said, you're sitting in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I, just got, I felt like I was in prison, straight <laughs> Well, they like dramatic scenes as well. You just burst out laughing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Quite often, very scenes. Once you start, it's very hard. It's like farting in church. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 One of the things she told us, those great stories she told, was that she'd been in London during the Blitz. Right. Just imagining that was extraordinary. Um, but she was, a, she was a great professional. She liked to tease people. I think she was having a bit of a tease of you. Oh, absolutely. She was. Um, but Because <laughs> she was kind of diminutive, but she, she, she pulled, she cracked a punch. Um, she was terrific. Uh, I also remember that uh, uh, I, I felt that I learned a lot. I was quite a young actor too, and I and I felt I learned a lot from Sheila. Mm. Sheila, who was just always on, you know, mm -hmm. on. You got on to set, she'd just be chatting away, and then someone would say, "You're on, Sheila," and she'd get up and we'd go into the set, and she would be busy, just completely busy, completely focused. We get through it quickly, and and I found that really impressive. The other thing I can tell you about Sheila is that. Um, during the time I was there, being a tough top dog, um, I was pregnant and I was a little bit sick a lot of the time. And um, and she, <laughs> who really loved me being pregnant, <laughs> used to like to lie on my on my on my knee in the green room just to put a head on my stomach and just <laughs> and feel the baby kick because it got to the point where I was quite pregnant and the baby occasionally kicked her in the ear and she quite liked that. <laughs> just a bizarre thing. One doesn't experience the workplace very often. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What about you, Susan? Yeah. Um, Sheila, she was a very good ad liver, a very good professional actress. And mostly she always knew the script back from the, the, the day that I worked with her. She must have forgotten her lines or whatever, but you would, no one would ever pick it up. I knew because it wasn't the line she delivered this line to me. And of course me, I too was a very young actress, oh, I don't know, 22, 23 at the time, something like that. I had learned my words word by word by word. So I was petrified of making a mistake and making a fool of myself. So I knew the battle. Anyway, my scene, I can't remember now, but anyway, it was with Lizzie and she, you know, she delivered she must have forgotten her lines, maybe she was busy, I don't know. She <laughs> forgot her lines and said whatever she said to me, and I just was floored. <laughs> and I thought, what in the hell am I going to respond to this? <laughs> what am I going to say? I don't know, I, I think I said something to her. But actually, I think she helped me out of it because she realised, and then she said something else and got back on track, and then I was able to. And away we went. And I don't think we didn't have to do another take. So I don't think anyone realised it at all. That's how good she wow. was. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's the actor's responsibility. It's in, no, lots of young actors come to me and say, what have I got to do? And I, I usually say, well, realize why you are in the scene. Yeah. And then if anything goes wrong, you can act it. Because yeah. you'll know, you know why you're in the scene. Yeah, yeah. exactly, so. exactly. The idea is to loosen up and it doesn't matter to you. But when you're young, you're petrified of making mistakes. Mm. Yeah. Won't get asked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happened a lot on, I'm hearing now with TV productions, a lot of the writers are actually on set while they're shooting TV shows now, but back then they didn't. So was there a lot of things that, uh, this is to all of you, like change on the script? Like if you're doing a scene and it didn't sound right, you just change it on the spot, mm -hmm. rather than going back to a writer yeah, to yeah. that change? Sometimes we would. And particularly we, we would sometimes pick up continuity things. And sometimes there were continuity of action, sometimes there was a continuity of our characters. And we would simply say, I would, I would never say it. I wouldn't yeah. say it that way. Or I wouldn't say that at all. Or that's something that so-and-so would say. So that came from how closely we all worked together and I think how we, how we all felt and worked with each other's characters as well. And we knew that if someone was hitting a wrong note kind of thing. And so we would sort that out on the floor. Wow. You know, and um, we never had it. There was never any kerfuffle about it. You know, it was simply the way that we were doing a great deal of work under pressure very quickly, as professionally as we could. Yeah. And that's how it works as well as it did. You know, because we were basically doing two hours of television a week, weren't we? Well, it, 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 was, it, it was a great deal of work. We were shooting two yes. hours a week. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Americans couldn't believe it. No. And uh, we had to put on, we had to open a, a special room down the front of the building at Channel 10 where we, <coughs> we would receive telephone calls from Americans, uh, people in America who make their television because they couldn't believe that we could shoot in the light that we shot in shadows and so forth. Because in American television, you can't make a shadow because you've got lights every which way. You just can't throw, throw a shadow in an American studio. But they, they were amazed that we could shoot television in lights and shadows in, at night and get away with it. And they were asking our lighting guys, who I still say are the best in the world, mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have the money to throw at a production that the Americans have got to throw at their productions. Mm -hmm. And we can still show them how to do it. It's yeah. wonderful. I think the crew were brilliant. Uh, <clears throat> you know, because that space at Channel 10, uh, you couldn't set up the whole prison there, of course. So we'd have, you know, we'd have a wall on paper that we'd be setting up room A, room B, and the rec room, or something like that, or the laundry, or something like that. And it would all be broken down overnight for the next lot of sets, or we'd shoot everything in one week and the next week something else. So they had to have their finger on the pulse the whole time to get the continuity right. And there were very rarely very rare. a mishap there. That, it was brilliant, really. Very brilliant nice. crew. And they loved it. And they were fun to work with, weren't they? Sure. So it was, a, it was a joy, really. They sort of, sometimes I felt like they dragged me along. They, you know, kept me up to the mark. And, yeah. and that's a fine that's yeah, thing. quite right. That's one thing I've learned about. Asked, did, Sorry. did anyone else ever see the walls move? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I looked very hard and I never saw it. on The Sopranos, who, I, who I'm doing some things with, and he he follows the podcast and has actually gone back to watch Prisoner. Oh, right. And he just couldn't believe that you guys did two hours yeah. of television a week. He said, like, you couldn't even do that now in America. Is that right? Correct, yeah. Okay. He, yeah. he actually said a few swear words. You couldn't, you couldn't <laughs> fucking believe they could do that. There because how did they do it? <laughs> there is no word. A swear word in this whole 
world today, but they don't know. <laughs> there, is, there are some words I won't use in public now. Me, I'm not. Um, it made us a little bit like, it was a bit like some Trinians, the fact that we yes. were all sort of calling each other slags instead yeah. of what, you know, what we really yeah. 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 Well, So uh, there was that kind of sweet, yes. sweet overlay because you couldn't use... Well, real. when America bought the show, uh, I used to keep getting memos from America saying, so would you please uh, improve on this type of uh, image? And I got one saying, please do not use the word mother. Huh? I said, excuse me, what, they, they, they've got mothers. Yeah, but we don't use the word mother in America because, excuse me, if you hear mother, it's mother So I had to cut out saying, your mother's coming to see you next week. I don't your mom's coming to see us. Oh, and uh, so I, I just said to the cast, we'll do it for about three weeks, then we'll slowly bring it back. They won't notice, and they didn't. We bought it. <laughs> God, love them. Someone's odd. Yes. Oh, yeah. So yes. you were guided by America at that time, but they, they would give you ideas on how they want to. Oh, they wouldn't give us ideas on how to do a, a story, but they certainly criticised what we did. Yeah. And well, in the end, I have to say, look, uh, uh, with all due reference, you are in danger of destroying the thing that made you buy the show. Mm. Mm. Uh, it was this roughness that made you buy the show. Mm. And uh, I actually got an apology back, so oh, really? it was good, yes. Uh, I can remember a fan letter that somebody read out to us that said, you know, I'm in Minnesota and I really love your show, but can I ask where you get all those fat, ugly women from? <laughs> 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 oh, oh dear. Because if they did it, it would be Charlie's Angels in yes. yeah. 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 Well, and also, also, as far as that's concerned, I tried to get some beautiful, uh, well, you find ugly, poor prostitutes, but they could have no that much money. <laughs> But, and they, they just wouldn't have it. So in the end, there was one story where we had to have an extremely beautiful young woman. And I said, I don't know any. Arguably, she was a beautiful young woman. She was, yes. Olivia Hamilton. Olivia. Oi, my secret girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I do have Olivia on the list to talk about, especially with you, Louise, as you had some very close oh, yeah. scenes with yeah, Olivia. Yeah, I'd like to do with Olivia. And uh, oh, Wayne yeah. Jarrett as well, who played Steve yeah. Faulkner, who yeah. tragically yeah. <laughs> passed away quite young. But uh, have you got a story you can share yeah. about Olivia? Well, well, Olivia, I had my first scenes with Olivia. Really? We were meant to be um, terrible. Uh, she was meant to be very cold and uh, calculating and out to. Uh, uh, to better everybody and to treat me accordingly and of course she didn't do any of those things because she's such a nice person, such a, a lovely person and uh, very gentle and very elegant, everything she did, even uh, just walking, I, I used to feel pretty tall from walking along the side of the river, I've got to say, because she always looked fabulous. Um, she was just a joy to work with and she fitted into the green room so well and of course she knew everybody better than I did, um, so she was welcomed as an old friend. And she had lots of stories. She'd done a lot of work with lions. She'd done a lot of shooting in Africa with lions. And she talked about lions. And she had pet lions as a child. Isn't that extraordinary? Mm -hmm. It's all coming back to me. Uh, so she played a doctor. She played a, a really awful person. Mm -hmm. And it is a case of, um, you know, acting, uh, her acting being terrific because she was not an awful person in any way, shape, or form. Just, just lovely. Charming, like, mm. cooperative, you know, let's get on, let's do it, you know. Yeah. She was my twin sister in Charlieville in 1971. Ah, oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. Was, was that with Johnny Farm? That was Darling John. That was where yeah. all that started. Wow. And she came out uh, to Australia because she was Peter Regan's partner yes. at the time, yes. and he was in the show. Yes, um, and uh, so Olivia, Olivia was around, of course, got to know her and then it turned out that the actress originally cast as, as the second twin had to leave the show and Olivia played a role in the West End. So it made perfect sense mm. to bring her on to our cast and she was just adorable. She had a dressing room, shrieked laughter every night. We had to do the strip. We had a 
fabulous you know, 1971 strip that we had to do in the ballroom, seeing as you do. Um, all, the, all the hot totties out there in Detroit or wherever, you know, all took their ball dresses off. And of course, had these fabulous corsets and all the rest happening. I mean, it's just one of those things you do in a musical comedy, really, isn't it? You know? <laughs> Run out of ideas, well. Look at that. Archie was just adorable. Yeah. Very, very, very wonderful and sweet person. And Peter was adorable as well. And together, they were just a magic couple. They really were. Yeah. And blocks. Mm. They wrote together on the box. Yes, they did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Speaking of beautiful people, also now, Louise, you wrote some very, you wrote some episode for Neighbours for Anne Hattie around her death on. Neighbors. Yes, I wrote Neighbours for several years and edited it too. Um, and yes, I did write all those because Anne became very ill yeah. and really couldn't work, so I just sat in a room and wrote, uh, so we could she could have a dignified exit, and of course. While she, she died on set, she certainly lived on me for that yeah. quite some time. Um, but she was, uh, it was, that was my introduction to working on Neighbours in the writing department because that was one of the first things I did. It was uh, baptism by fire, learning to find people's voices and, and, um, and turn out uh, uh, scripts quickly, same thing, fast writing, but, you know, despite all the fast writing, there are many writers who really want to make it good too. And, yeah. you know, do your best, and uh, and it was a great experience for me uh, as a television writer to do all that. Yeah. yeah. Did you, you ever cross paths on neighbours? Or? Uh, oh yes, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. Sure, sure, uh, sure. We we didn't tend to go onto the set uh, when they were shooting at all, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I wrote a lot of it stuff, and I loved writing there. Well, one thing that happens is sometimes you run under time. And you get a quick call from the floor saying we're under time. We need a two-minute scene. The only actors we've got are Ian Smith and someone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, the way we to do it at the time was on set. So we'd never bring anybody in. Would be they'll name two actors, completely unrelated. And you think, oh, well, that's a little bit of a test. And you sit down and try and create a scene that they could interact with for two minutes. And those filler scenes became the the fun, the best fun to write because you didn't have any story to pin on them. And, and the actors like Ian and like um, Jackie and Alan, they would just leap into those yeah. and do them. They were brilliant. They were, and I was always so proud when I saw them because you know, they just did such a wonderful job. It is good because you have to not only write for the actor or actress, you have to write so as to not upset the audience. Yeah. You have to nurse the their favourite characters. Yeah. And it can be very hard, my God, if you go outside the bounds of, 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 of keeping the audience happy. Boy, do you find out about that. Yeah. Oh. But good lessons. Sometimes lessons were good. I remember someone writing to me in Neighbours saying, uh, my children love watching the show, but when people go into the coffee shop, they never pay. <laughs> <laughs> they'd say, thanks a lot, take the coffee, walk away. And I hadn't noticed it. And after that, and I thought, actually, that's a terrible thing. It was a really good hook. And so after that, you know, I made a note and I said to all the other writers, you know, make sure they pay, make sure you say here. Yeah. And, and Harold would say, I'll give you your change, you know. <laughs> so it actually looked like a normal transaction instead of everyone just going, yeah, thanks for that, off we go. Uh, which, you know, is a very good role. The things they notice is incredible. Um, I was travelling around the country in Victoria uh, with my wife and uh, we were in a hotel and this guy came up to me and he said, Harold did the most sensible thing with a cup of tea. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you get the hot water and you put the tea bag in and then you put the tag of the tea bag under the cup so that when it wouldn't fly out when you put the, oh no, when, afterwards when you put the water in. I said. have a funny fan story. I, I know when we interviewed Kate Hood who played Kath Maxwell on oh, yeah. Talking Prisoners, she said that she was at a park once and there was a wedding happening for photography and the bride actually left the wedding, ran over to Kate and called her, like, went off ahead of her, called her a child murderer, it was just going kind of crazy. Um, quite clear that she wasn't, it was just a park. Oh no, she was. Oh, she was. <laughs>
say terrible jokes on the uh, English backpackers when we were working in the street uh, outside. And uh, on some summers they were stinking, stinking hot. We were dying uh, with makeup and everything. Anyway, when we went back to the, the buses we had out the back where we would have our wardrobe and our makeup and everything, we used to, terrible thing, we used to say we, we had to go down and see the, the uh, tourists. And uh, we'd be dying, the sweat would be pour pouring off us, and uh, we'd rip into the wardrobe bus and get great big heavy pullovers. And then go down and say, we'd be putting them on and say, oh, sorry, it's turned cold, but there you go. <laughs> and <laughs> these four palms, they were going, cold! You've got to be joking. <laughs> they were dying, they were down to a pair of shorts and nothing else. And, uh, but they, they believed us. Oh, that's funny. Um, Ian, now you were quite close to Tom Oliver on Neighbours, mm. who was also on Prisoner, and, mm. and no one really sort of speaks about Tom's time on, on Prisoner. No, no. Tom does. Tom does. <laughs> what was it like working with Tom? I mean, especially on Neighbours. You, well, you, you had to be on your toes. There was one thing that Tom really made every actor that worked with him on the floor. You had to know why you were in the scene. Because he tests you out, and he was right to do so. And uh, I, there was only one time that we ever walked away from the script, and it was a scene pointing out how the two of us had uh, grown old ungracefully. <laughs> and uh, we were in the kitchen, in the Ramsey kitchen, and I walked in and I heard help. I said. Tom, uh, not Tom, what was his name? Uh, Lou, Lou, Lou. Lou, where are you? On the floor. So I walked around the bench and there was Lou Carpenter on the floor, he couldn't get up. And uh, so, and that was within the script altogether. I said, all right, I'll help you. So I took his arm and I bent the wrong way. And I ended up on the ground with him. <laughs> <laughs> and then the two of us had had enough experience to know we could turn this into a fantastic because there was no other reason for the scene other than to show how these two men had got to a stage <coughs> where they were not as young as they used to be. So uh, I start to laugh and laugh and laugh. And Tom got onto it. He said, me, what are you laughing at? And I said, look at the two of us. We're stupid, we can't even get up. And then he said, well, there's nothing to do. <laughs> and he started to laugh. And it ended up being a three minute laughing scene. It was like laughing in church. And, and we got uh, congratulations from the UK on that scene. Wow. It's just a matter of what you can do when you're cheeky enough. <laughs> now, for those that don't know, what was a typical day in the writer's room on Prisoner Life? Because obviously you weren't at the set, you are in another... Well, location. the writers wrote at home. Okay. The storyline department wrote, sat down together and worked out probably two weeks' worth of stories. Uh, my probation time with Prisoner, I was working in a place called Dirty Dicks, do you all know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I was being, Queen's Road. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've been King Henry VIII in uh, Dirty Dicks. <laughs> and uh, one of the minstrels came up and said, would you care to try out to be a, a script editor? And I said, yeah, all right. I don't know what to do, but I'll give it a go. And uh, so I got in there just in time for them to sit down and work out the stories for the end of the year and to create a book. <coughs> to bring the people back for the next year. And uh, they, I spent a whole day sitting there with these very experienced people and uh, trying to work out a cliffhanger for the end of the year. And uh, it was a problem because they covered every story there was to cover. I had a sneaking suspicion that I had a reasonable story. But I thought, no, shut up, you, you're the new kid on the block. Uh, and anyway, in the end, Ian Bradley, the, uh, the, 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 the boss, yeah, thank you. Um, he said, okay, and you got an idea. And I said, well, yeah, maybe. So I told him. And it's when, um, what's his name, the screw, uh, 
his, his wife and kid got flown oh, out of the hotel. Jim Fletcher. Jim Fletcher. And there was some story. And, uh, and <coughs> I said it, and then there was a silence of, and then words happened. Words like, shit, Jesus Christ, <laughs> holy hell. And I knew that my period of probation was over. Uh, they, they picked it. A couple of actors didn't like me because I killed them. <laughs> but uh, it, it worked, it worked well. It's amazing what can happen in a story room. To me, that's the hardest part of making a television program. To keep making stories, make believe, cowboys and Indians, that will hopefully hold the audience and not say, oh, not have them say, oh, come on, go. I do that, but uh, that's me. I used to edit a tram ticket once upon a time. I, I could look at or read anything without trying to edit it, make it better, or cut it out altogether. But uh, that's television. I love it. You wrote another amazing scene, uh, an episode where uh, Linda Stoner, who played Eve Wilder, yeah. got hung. That was, uh, you wrote that episode, I'm sure you remember it. Um, <laughs> That was a, a horrific episode. Oh, yes, 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 Richard. Yes, she was hanged, yeah. yeah. Actually, she put up a warning because it was that. That's right. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's what well, you have to do. In Sydney, they did. I don't know about Well, what goes to Sydney goes everywhere. Yes, yes. Yeah, she was a phantom lady or something, wasn't she? Phantom lady, yeah. yeah. Sorry. She was pretty phantom lady. She was a phantom lady or something. Yes, yes, yes that's right. Yes. And it, it was really it was shocking at the time. It was. Yes, the two feet in front of the camera. Usually, was a member of the cast, a member of the crew. Because in the first episode, one of the girls hung herself in the. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. But that was completely a part of it. I'm the freak. Yes. Can anyone remember this? Hey, Frankie, do you love me? Yeah. 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 What was the one single ingredient? Yeah. You know, we didn't know. Like, it was different. Unless she had somebody in the family, like, man, had he gone to jail? It was, it was like forbidden fruit. We didn't yeah. know what, what it was, you know. Yes. How that sneak peek just to get a little bit of it. Well, I was a total innocent until I had to go to the uh, women's jail once a month. And my God, women were treated shabbily up against men. Yeah. Women, uh, women were second class prisoners. Yeah. And they were. Crime is always fascinating anyway, isn't yes. it? Well, the books they sell. But and they were just so believable. <coughs> I never knew what a lesbian was until I first watched Bridget. I was yeah, only so 16 when it first came out. Sure. Yeah, I think I was like, sorry. Oh, you were an innocent. Things like they weren't depicted. Yeah, I watched too much Australian content. Precisely. And that's what I love all the men of these things. And that's part of the contract. I'll accept that. To introduce, knowing that some people won't know this, you've got to introduce it in such a way. You've got to introduce it in such a way. You've got to introduce it in such a way. Careful way. Yeah. Otherwise, you could get people hating lesbians. Yeah. Yeah. Could you ever suggest any storylines to the writers at the time back then, or no, was just no, given no, what you were? I wouldn't have. I would have confidently that. Now, Raylene, I learned something about you last night that I'm just going to bring up quickly. It's a little bit of trivia. Is that your husband Dennis was on Prisoner? 
In episode 11, you played a doctor. He told, oh. he told Frankie the brother had died. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> so that's your husband. Yes, it did. Now, I know we're pushed for time. Um, we're going to have food shortly coming out and, and drinks and everything. But can we do some fan questions before that? Has anyone got any questions for any of the cast? Yes, Sorry, Bruce. So, uh, Fletch? Yeah. Um, hi, hello, everybody. Um, it, your character was introduced into Wentworth. So, not necessarily the same character, just the character no. name. What would you like them doing? Wentworth goes so much further, doesn't it, with uh, yeah. storylines and things. It's, that there's, yeah. there's, it's actually rich ground for uh, taking characters, taking us deeper into, into an exploration of character. And that's what's so actually <coughs> about. Mm. So. They get away with me on that. They do. <laughs> so <laughs> great. Yeah. I mean, I was, I, it doesn't have much to stop me, but I, I must admit, I think, wow. They were allowed to get that through, you know? Yeah, yeah. so I must say, I, I pay compliments to the second uh, lot of prisoner, the, mm. the most modern production. I yeah. thought they did a wonderful job. Yeah, what do but you all think about start. that, having a remake of a... Of a which no, doesn't no. happen often no. in Australia. No. Yeah. What, do, what do you all think of that? No, prisoner, about prisoner and the older series in the, the 70s and 80s is the comedy. There was always yes. comedy yes. in yes. Prisoner, yes. whereas yes. there's not a lot of comedies. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, pump, the pumpkins, the pumpkins that blew up, yeah. uh, that came from a real. Was with the drinking all yeah, the time. yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. that came from my going out to uh, the prison because they did have exploding pumpkins. <laughs> they were making booze yeah. and, and uh, plugging up the hole and leaving it in the garden until the, the plug popped out and they knew it was ready to drink. <laughs> what was it like visiting prisons for the first time? Like real prisons? What was it like? Oh. Well, okay, there was one day I turned up and I had to go to the uh, governor's office and I had to walk over the big garden and uh, there was this huge woman with the motor mower doing the lawn and she saw me coming and she just stopped. I'll stand up. Oh, if I can. Um, and she saw me coming and she went, <laughs> and picked up the motor, <laughs> spilling petrol everywhere. She got her, everything on my body that denoted that I'm a male shrank by three quarters. <laughs> God, she was frightening. Then a screw came out and said, "Oh, yes, her name was Morris." Yes, Morris. <laughs> Yes, question. I, I just loved it that the hilarious when the girls would turn up and they'd say, stand on the white line and they'd all have a suitcase with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, well, you went, they went home to the back back before they came out. Yeah. 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 Couldn't you turn but up all the time with the suitcase? That actually happened, but usually with back of really? Yes. Yeah. 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 Paula always enjoyed it because she was able to be a bit more glamorous in it. Yes, she did. Because she used to get a bit like, oh, it's so drab, everybody's not, you know, in uniforms, and it's like, That's she, she used to actually, she used to get upset when she came really? home after all the Really? Day. It's just so drab and so sick, like, compared to what she'd done from coming from cop shop and oh, yeah, yeah, other yeah, ones. Yeah. I think that's what she told me. Yeah. 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 Of course, I ended up marrying her. I ended up marrying her, didn't I? In, uh, you did. In uh, Neighbours. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Rob. Rob. Um, um, yes. I've got a question for Ian. Yes. Hey, mate. Oh, hello. Um, Ian, you were talking about Wentworth and how you introduced characters into Wentworth. And I'm wondering if you were talking about Wentworth's character was based on a serial killer in Australia called um, Dulcie Wadsworth. Yes. <coughs> I didn't know that until years after. Yes, but go so ahead. So please. it's really fascinating to know that there was correspondence with prisoners. Oh yes. How many other prisoners, how many other act characters were actually based off real Australian prisoners? Okay, uh, not that many. Not that many. We used to use their story, not their life, if you know what I mean. Uh, there was one, now I don't know if you remember this one, I think she was in Adelaide. 
She was poisoning husbands. Oh, yeah. 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 Vivian Gray played that yeah. part. Yes. Yes, there was a big With, wall case. Uh, uh, oh, what was the name of the tree? She used to barbecue their food. Yes. And, she, and I still have the letter of her threatening to say, the woman who actually did the murders. Oh, you're not threatening to sue Grundy's at the time because they said they stole the storyline from. Yes, that's right, her storyline. Yes. We, well, well, we did actually, but I didn't. At yes. the time, they weren't allowed to play it in Sydney. Is no. that right? Especially if it was before the court, you wouldn't be allowed to. Yeah, but in fact, yeah, in fact, yeah, normally, yeah, yeah. those shows, they often take things. When I worked on um, uh, Blue Healers, we'd get the Northern Territory Times every Monday. Yes. And we'd sit and read it. Yes. Because it was stranger than fiction. I mean, it was really crazy. You know, a woman takes on a crocodile in a local swimming pool. <laughs> and and then we'd think, how can we make that work from our time? <laughs> Just throw a woman in a swimming pool with a crocodile. Do it. like that. So, in fact, in fact we did uh, ransack uh, story magazines and newspapers, the outrageous newspapers, like the Northern Territory Times, which is outrageous, and um, uh, for stories. I don't know if they did on Prisoner, but did that, but that was certainly the practice in um, in um, the Healers. Is that right? Wasn't there also a similar storyline with Julia Blake around the poisoning? She had right. three or four different characters that I've seen. Yeah, yeah. That shrub that was in the garden and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that was when she was make up first. She was Julia Blake. Oh, I have to She was a herbalist. Oh, that's yeah, she was making up the potion. I don't remember. So my, my question is around, was it any scene that was, was really like very difficult as an actress? Yeah. Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah. Difficult as an actress or an actor to do? Any scenes? Uh, yes. 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 For me, there was there was a paedophile uh, in one of our stories. And Is this in prison or um, Nate's? Prison. Prison. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I can't remember what it was because it was so fat. Uh, through confession time, my father was a paedophile, and that's how I came into this world. I was I'm the result of a paedophile rape. Um, and my feelings toward paedophiles ain't very nice. But the guy that played the part was, he was so good, I had trouble from keeping my hands from going around his neck. Uh, he was so good, this man. Uh, I can't think of his name, isn't that awful? Um, but gee, <laughs> there you go. Didn't I just tell everyone my father was a... Thank you. 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 Thank the free. <laughs> the free. <laughs> the the, the freak. And, uh, yeah. and uh, anyway, because uh, the, we didn't have to do many takes on it, but I dreaded it because I thought, oh my God, they're going to strip me right down. What are they going to do? Because I always had this, I've got no boobs, very small boobs anyway. And as I keep growing up, and you know how kids at school can be so unkind. And my girlfriends used to say to me, and this was probably a little bit of school when I was 14. 15 years of age. They all used to say to me, Susan, if you open the door, if you open the door with nothing on, they'd say, Hello, little boy, is your mother on? <laughs> 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 I just always stayed with me and I was always so self conscious. And I thought, with this strip set, I thought, Oh my God, now everybody's going to see that I've got no boobs. <laughs> is that why you went around Sydney flashing? <laughs> <laughs> just, that just stuck in my mind. Young and silly then. Now I wouldn't even think about it. Now, who cares? Yeah, that's it. Any more questions? Uh, um, question. Um, just for Anna, um, firstly, the scene where you were around was really scary and helpful. And the music behind it was what? Um, was really scary. Yeah, well, I was just I, I was just thinking um, yeah. that last question from Rave, um, about difficult scenes. For me, 
that scene wasn't actually very difficult at all. But for Carol Skinner, who was doing the drowning, yeah. it was really difficult for her. Like she was, yeah, she's a wonderful, yes. one of my favorite Australian actresses. And um, she was such a delight to work with her. And I, I really liked her a lot. We got on very, very well. But she, and, and you know, we had about this much water that was drowning. But every time, like, like she was so good at doing it. She's so, so scary, like yeah. you say, like such a scary, scary moment. Um, but every time they said cut, she was like, oh, are you all right? Yeah. Like she was honest, she was over the top. She was so upset, like so nervous about uh, about hurting me or, or you know anything like that. So that, I think that was a really difficult scene for her rather yeah. than rather than me. Speaking of scenes, Babs, I actually watched one of your scenes late last night, just to refresh. You know, the scene where you decapitated an officer's head, which I want to talk about in the interview, but what was it like shooting that scene in the, it was in the garden shed from there. It was in the garden shed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was in the garden shed. And, I mean, yes, it, it, because it had to be at a certain pitch, um, it, was, it was a very difficult scene to shoot because we really only wanted to do it once. And we had the physical constraints of being in the garden shed. So it was me, you know, one psychopath with another psychopath, and a sound guy, the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Uh, yeah, really, 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 you know, up close and personal stuff. Yes. And so it was very, very carefully choreographed as it needed to be because, you know, we had to see the arc of the trouble moving and all this kind of thing, and we were in a very constrained way. So, the difficulty of it was letting the scale of the emotion <coughs> be true, but keep the technical grip that we needed on exactly what we were doing. And we rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. And um, when we really felt that we were ready to go for it, we had to work ourselves up actually into that sort of state and kind of way, you know what I mean? And when we felt we were ready to go for it, everybody tensed up. Even even the crew who are always superb, they would have the best oh. crews ever. I don't care what anyone says. In the world. And when you work with actors overseas who come and work here, they can't believe our crews. Oh, wow. oh they wipe the floor with oh, right. They totally do. So they were completely supportive. They were so focused. The concentration was incredible. And when we got the action, um, David, of course, was was absolutely amazing. And so scary. He was so frightened. And he was afraid of the scene because that night looked as good as it was. Mm, you know, it, it really was. So we had all that going on, plus the size of the table that had to be heaved over and all this kind of stuff. And like I say, we really don't want to do it once. <coughs> and so everybody was at constant pitch. We got the action and it went like that. Mm, amazing. It went mm. and it was Such extraordinary. A and that scream at the end of the day was not only one of, you know, terror and horror, but thank the living whoever. So we got it in the can. Because oh. I thought if he, if, you know, that cameraman looks at the back and says there's a hair in the gate, I'll kill him. <laughs> 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 and one other little tag to that story, very quickly. One of the fan gatherings such as this, somebody came up to me and said, um, talked about that scene, you know, everyone's intrigued. And he said, um, I've got the head. I, I was going to ask that. I saw the head was on eBay. Oh. Really? Oh. Yeah, the head, yes. <laughs> Who owns the head? I mean, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. I said, how did you get the head? Uh, and he said, it was, <laughs> got it out of the skip. <laughs> <laughs> that it had oh, to clean the props cage or some such thing like wow. that had happened. And it just got chucked out with the rest of the wow. <laughs> I don't know if David ever knew that. I, just, I have a serious <laughs> tell him that, that his head has now been flogged on the I love wow. that. Now, you all had some pretty tragic endings on Prison X, but like you, Raylene, being uh, hit over the skull by Red. <laughs> Janet Adderath, who's actually a good friend of yours. Um, <laughs> what was that? Say? And Babs. Uh, what was that scene like to shoot that one? Well, again, Janet was more upset than I was. <laughs> you know, between taking the book and responsible for saying, fine. Yeah. I just didn't like the last shot, I think, where my big ass. <laughs> 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 Janet Andrew Walker, one of the great 
Australian actresses, mm -hmm. model, and she doesn't get anywhere in that world, does she? Uh, you work closely with her on Neighbours for oh, a long time. very, very close. Yeah. She was one of She is one of Yeah. And Susan, um, you got burned to death in the governor's yeah. office. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Was that you? Was that was no. you? No. <laughs> no. Louise, you're the most talked about character through all the, the yeah. fan forums and Facebook pages. I know we touched on this in the interview uh, last year. Is Sandy Edwards alive or dead? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. But I think she's probably alive. Probably alive. Like, there we go. Wreaking havoc I mean, somewhere, yes. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, was all very, very it was a very simple ending for me because no one had to see me die. They just had to see the, the rubbish truck. Slowly, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the crew members gave me a rubbish truck. <laughs> 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 I had it for years. Because they left, they left the part open for you. Yeah, well, yeah, there was a potential to maybe find me somewhere else committing nefarious acts and bring me back to jail, but that didn't happen. <laughs> but that's, that's why, really. They just sort of left it open. And it was um, Olivia that was responsible for that, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk, of course. <laughs> talking about crew or crews, uh, many times, well, the biggest thing lately is to go over to England and do pantomimes for, uh, for the cast. Um, and uh, I went over a few times, and you'd be invited onto the <coughs> BBC to do different shows. And the people, the crews there, they say, oh, Mr. Smith, uh, would you give a cup of tea, uh, Mr. Smith? Would you, can I get you anything, anything that you... I don't even know you need. But, uh, <laughs> and I said, no, no, thank you very much. And I'd get up and go, and they'd rush and they'd grab the door and open the door. So much so that when I came home, I'd walk up to a closed door and just wait for someone. <laughs> 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 serious, oh, serious, serious. And uh, then they would come over. This is when uh, the show belonged to uh, the ABC, uh, the BBC over there. Um, They'd send people over to Australia and they'd watch the crew here say, Hey, Smitty, <laughs> <laughs> is your name Ian Smith? <laughs> yes. Well, how many times have I got to call you to get onto the bloody set? Move it! <laughs> and they, they would look at us. And I'm not, I'm not making that up, am I? No. No, no. And they said, <laughs> Not very genteel. Well, the second we did that in the UK, yeah. Was it, was it Top Up or Uncle Ray? Top, uh, oh. Top Up or Uncle Ray. We've <laughs> got six seconds on our set, you know. Top Uncle Up meant, oh, just, just a Top Up, you know. Mm -hmm. no, I won't, no, darling, I won't have another drink, just a Top Up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and Uncle Ray was, was, Ray was, was, was wonderful. I spoke to him yesterday. Shut, did you? Yeah. Oh, glorious thing. Oh. That's one thing I've learned doing, I mean, I think we've done 70 interviews so far for Talking Prisoner, and one thing I've learned is that and everyone, every actress, actor that's come through has said that crew are oh, absolutely amazing. Absolutely. And they can sense if a young actor is nervous. A young actor or actress is nervous, and they help them through. They help them through. They're wonderful. They're fantastic. Wow. Um, now, time, sorry, food's ready. We're going to cut to a break, have some food, photos, drinks, chat, and um, <coughs> merchandise. Sorry, merchandise is over at the table with my beautiful fiance, Kim. And she's reading something to me, sorry. You can order online. I'll order online as well. Or cash. Or cash. We'll do that over at the table. So, and then we'll, um, Tim's going to take over from me after the break with a prisoner quiz for the prize. Thank you so much.
So, which prisoner did Phyllis Hunt keep Nick for so uh, that prisoner could have it off with the maintenance man? Sorry? No. Okay. I know the answer. Um, Randy Carter. Correct. Oh. 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 Um, Ross Gentle. Ross Gentle, one of the most um, the bizarre ones. characters in a cycle yeah. yeah. ever. Characters, because yeah. there was about four of them. Um, she had multiple personalities, sure. so we don't know. <laughs> Ted Douglas, in 1983, when Ted Douglas uh, was fired from his job, who succeeded him in the job of the department head? So who is your replacement? Oh, <laughs> yes. No. Andrew no. Reynolds. Who? Andrew Reynolds. No, he ran the factory. No. So who became the head of department after this fund was fired? <laughs> Wasn't Gillespie? No. That's the actor's name. Yes. Yeah. Kiwi. Kiwi actor. God, if you don't, no, no, no. Well. He, he was. Who's he played Mercy's boyfriend in Jackson. Jackson. Oh! Yeah, but what did the character. Okay, Arthur Richards. Uh, oh. Okay, I'll make it too hard, right? Okay, next one. Barbara Fields. What was the name of the shoe, uh, the boss of the shoe factory that Barbara worked for? Good, thank God. This is hard. Barbara <laughs> Miller. <laughs> I'm Reynolds. Do you? No, that was the guy who came to He'll be right eventually. I know, I'm going to keep going. He was the shady boss who actually did the crime, and she did the time. Yeah. Give up. Something really... George Logan. Oh. Okay, here's an easy one. In 1984, Cass Parker was attacked. Surprise, surprise, she didn't do the attacking this time. <laughs> or decapitating. Now, who attacked her by rubbing pepper in her eyes with a handkerchief? Oh, Hayley. Correct. Oh, oh, she did everything, didn't she? Margot was very Including Sam. Including a great fight. Okay, that's it for our panel today. Now we're going, oh no, did we do a Sandy one? Yes, what was Sandy Edwards' um, husband's name? Yeah, what was his first name? I, I remember that. Yeah, we actually mentioned the name before. Yeah, we did. In relation to another um, character. Andrew Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name, sorry. His name was Arthur. Yes. Strange name, strange truth. Arthur. Alright, next one, next bit is quotes. So I'm going to say a line from the series, and you are going to guess the character. Now you must let me finish the line. Just in case. The first one is, G'day, Doc. Looks like we're making this trip together. Correct. Oh, watch your bags. Maggie Miller. Oh, whatever made me do a silly thing like that? I must have been too busy thinking of that poor old lady kid you buried alive. B. B. Smith. Correct. Who's heard it first? Hayden. Hayden. You should have heard it. <laughs> 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 Number three. Ooh, mum. I'm back in the stair because of you. Nor you can say, ooh, mum. Nolly Burke. 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 Yeah, was it? That's who got it? That's like the ocean. Was it Scott first or? Gentleman over there. Oh, was it? Yeah, Fletch. 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 Judy is a lesbian, but she's not predatory. Hayden? No. No. Davidson? Close, she was in the same. Correct. I tried to do my best, else. <laughs> I think you're responsible for some of these lines, Ian, actually. 
Maybe you'll tell us why he wrote it. You actually, I know. It's hard to Don't kid yourself thinking that anyone's interested in seeing how you do it. It's a long time to keep your legs crossed, love. <laughs> no, that wasn't Frankie. That wasn't me. Who's that? Who said that one? In the toilet block. She's here with us today. No, it's going to send her Kelly. No. Great lady. Yeah, Phyllis. To Rachel. Who's the guy that she was talking to? Her dad was the guy from number 96 that got run over. Oh, gosh. And she killed you. You know, heard from number 96. She was her dad that ran the news agent. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's it. Running. Running shame. This is an interesting one. It's a random line. Frankie used to look at my bum all the time. It's not nice. No. It's even more than that. It was Lizzie. <laughs> that's why it's so strange, is it? Oh, don't worry, love. Look at me. I'm happy. I've never said this to a woman before. Not even my mum, but I'll love you, Jude. Hazel Pendleton. Not the actress. Me, I know. I'm better with that. You should ask me that. Why do you sound so exactly like? Yeah. Now stop that. Stop it. Or else I'll put you back in that big hole. Grandma. Who? Grand, grandma. Jenny Hartley's grandma. Oh, uh, no. The mother of the kids that live in Warner. Yep. Yeah. 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 In the first episode. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Bentley, her name was. Yep. No, young Dorothy Mark. Correct. He wants to get us for a point of a name in the outlook. She was in the I don't suppose Erica Davidson's a lesbian. If she was, she's probably into skinny brunettes. Hey. Correct. I like Gilma. <laughs> hey, I forgot to tell you. We've got a new nickname for you. It's all P's idea. Do you want to know what it is? <laughs> Someone Frankie. out there, Connor. Frankie. 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 No. That's an obvious character. Carol Burns. How's about giving us a severe kiss before I chop you down the stairs? <laughs> 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 Stewart. John Stewart is correct. Who got that one though? No. Yep. Tommy Dysart. That's why you didn't get a part in the show. Because I was in the Wife, Jane, she? She was in prison too. And she should have a bigger role too. Yeah, I know. She Looks like the freak's got her own goodies anyway. Eric Cavill at Dykes. Ellen McKenzie. Correct. He's great. <laughs> 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 How many times have you watched the show? He takes sound bites. Yeah, too many. Too. <laughs> All right. I'll meet you halfway. Licorice all sorts. And there's a bag of sour cherries in there, or uh, jelly snakes more in your line. Pat Everson is correct, Jesse yeah. Wyndham. Sorry, I'm trying to do the next one. Simon. Oh, come on, Kelly, you like glass, you know, I can see right through you. Look at Harvey and that zombie Jenkins stuff now. Jane Ferguson, of course. <laughs> And I actually, you wrote this next time, Ian, because I looked at the script for you. That's why you're in this business, isn't it? It's the only way you can get a man. My God, I nearly threw up every time I touched you. You're a joke, a revolting joke. Everybody knew it, Adams. Correct. <laughs> you wrote that. Where was that coming from? Where's that coming from? You threw up every time I touched you. The brain, 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 the
Murray Fields. Okay, well done. That's on to round three, the final round. When Myra Desmond discovered that Bobby Mitchell was growing pot behind the shed, what did you do to her? Joe told her a lesson she would never forget. Which was? Bachelor. <laughs> Name three prisoners. Three prisoners. And the reason is, this is why I guess he had that nickname. But name three prisoners that Jim Fletcher screwed. <laughs> actually had sex with. Hmm? Who were the three prisoners that Jim Fletcher had sex with? And he did. Oh, Kate Shill was one of them. She was a prisoner. Janet. Oh, no, no, she was a prisoner. Next. Three prisoners he had it off. I'm thinking. Carolyn Simpson. Oh, yeah, Ross Spears. Jackie Nolan. Jackie Nolan. Frank <laughs> There's one more. The very first prisoner he had it off with. No. Of course not. Lizzie was on the pill. No, he didn't have it off with her. Not Penny Frank. Close. This woman was a prostitute as well. No. It wasn't Cressy, was it? No. Probably should have been. Give up? No. It was in the first year. She what? No, no. It was me and Amanda. Give up? Do you want a clue? Who was the prisoner was involved with Monica Ferguson? Anyway, the character's called Denise Crabtree. Oh, yeah, yeah. Linda Keane. Linda Keane. Again, <laughs> how, many prisoners did, how many prisoners did Steve Faulkner have in office? One in the room. One in the room. Correct, who got that one? <laughs> how many prisoners did Colin Powell have in office? No, just None, just the husband. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got one. Yeah. What about Meg? How many did she go through? How many did you have it on with? Meg, Meg, Meg. Oh, Meg. Oh, Meg. Oh, Meg. Meg. Oh, Meg. Did she have it through? Did she? 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 And so lastly, how many prisoners did Mrs. O'Regan screw? <laughs> All of them, All with the cooking. Who perked on Kath Maxwell in the shower? Rodney. Um, Rodney. Uh, Correct. Yes, yeah. she was having yeah. a shower and was looking at Who got that thing? Hayden. 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 <laughs> Who ripped up Willie Bear? Hayden. Angela Adams. Correct. <laughs> Which four characters? Four characters, the actresses actually, but we'll say the characters. Which four characters bared their breasts or side boob in the show? Connor. Jim Carrey? Of course. <laughs> Why did you remember that? <laughs> 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 Who? Who? No. Who? No. Marina Finlay. Marina Finlay, correct. Oh, Marina. Two more. Jackie Dolan. No. The other one, she was mentioned before. She sort of stripped off and went like that. How'd you go? Amanda. No, Brandy. And there was one in a very early series. Now apparently there was a fifth one, because I went with, through these questions with Alan who runs um, the band magazine, and he said, it's not Anna Haruby, is it? And I went, no. So it doesn't say here. She goes, oh no, that wasn't full boob, that was just a step through 90. <laughs> must have been the lighting, so we must have seen nipples at some point. The last one is um, the last one is Mrs. Bent, no, the mistress of, of the Lynn Warner. Who, yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, she, the Hoya host just comes in, she totally strips off. And, so it's actually completely new. Played by that wonderful actress that also did soft porn. Oh, Marilyn Rogers! Yes! <laughs> yeah, she did Felicity and Yes. Okay, so. Um, so, yeah, so Nolly, the Lady Dogs, and Mrs. Bentley, and Brandy Carter. Who won that one? John Bonner and you two. Yep. Next question. Who won the Connor. Connor? Connor. And someone said Brandy as well. Was it you, Craig? Yes. Yeah, or Marina or someone. Phantasm comes in. She get busted because he walks up and she's screwing Rod Miller. And so he gets in her breast, but I don't know. Do you actually see her nipple or anything? You see her nipple or you see the flat nipple? Okay. Um, we'll go back. During a television, television interview, what did Susan Rice do to her husband? Oh, throw acid. Nigel threw acid into his face. Is that it? Nigel? Granny Bits. Who was sent to Wentworth Detention Centre in 1979 for blackmailing Tom Burton? 79? Yes. For Tom mailing, for, Tom mailing? for black mailing, <laughs> Tom Burton. Okay, now this character was played by. Yeah, Lulu. Oh, yeah. Yahoo's wife. Yes. Character was called Melinda Cross. That's right. She was also the second character ever in the show. Yeah, and because um, I believe that Karen and Melinda were the first characters in a TV soap opera, OT had abortions. No, no other show had done it. They always lose their baby just before it reaches. Um, or get a malignant tumour or something. And that's carried on through Next one. Name the two women who kidnapped Erica Davidson. Oh. Oh. Yeah. No, she organised the kidnapping. But there was another wonderful, crazy... Sally Turner, is the actress? Kate Turner. Kate Turner. Kate Turner. Bethany, no. Oh, yeah. The other one, and she, she hung herself too, this character, after the kidnapping Mary, America. Mary... Huh? Mary, Mary Charleston Mary. was the actress, yep. Characters were called Lita Goldman. I don't remember her. Remember she's on the stairs and um, Meg goes, Are you Linda? Uh, which prison officer? Which prison officer had an old friend called Valerie Jacobs? Oh. Connor. Colin Howe. Colin Howe. Who Correct. was that? <coughs> Valerie Jacobs, played by Barb Angel, one of the most intelligent women I think the persons I've ever met. Um, she was in. Bay Max Brady. That's it. Uh, now, Vivian Williams and Carolyn Simpson were mother and daughter. Can you think of another mother and daughter that incarcerated us at the same time? Beth Keen and Emma. Correct. Judy. Another one? Judy and her daughter. Oh. Yep. Oh, Judy. Uh, what's this? Christine. Christine. Yep. That's correct. Christine. Christine. Yeah. Christine. And Leanne Burke. Yep. And there's one more apparently. Connor. Um, Lexi and her mum. Yep. Yes. Jesse, Lexi, and one more. Judy Bryant. We said that, that one. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Guess it, can you remember? There was one more. Only briefly. No, it was um, Tracy Mann's character. Oh, yeah. Georgie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who was Sadie Grimshaw? Anyone know Sadie Grimshaw? A character called Sadie Grimshaw? She's not the movie? No. This is too hard, isn't it? I thought you'd all be full on hardcore, hardcore prison content. Okay, so Sadie Grimshaw was the Eddie Parslow's um, little old lady friend who lived with her. And I remember watching it as a kid thinking, this Sadie woman's great. I hope they commit a big crime and get go to work with us together. Um, who scolded Mrs. O'Regan with hot fat? Stole someone with fat. Yeah, I remember the same. No. Yeah. 
Was it Marley? She was. No, she in the got different hot fashions. Different hot fashions. Different hot fashions. Oh, no, Doug Farrow is correct. Oh. Did you get that? <laughs> At the bridal shop where Pixie Mason worked, what was the name of her Jewish boss? Mr. Schumann is correct. What's your name? The only one I've got. You might get this one. Who killed child killer Bella Albrecht? Nigel. Martha. Martha Reeves is correct. And an extra point for her nickname. <laughs> we'll go into nickname in a minute. What was the name of Donna Mason's pin? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And there was a really great line where he says, Your hair's wet. I think there's something real horny in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who writes this book? Not me. <laughs> My first media teacher was actually a writer from Prisoner and I stole some of the scripts from his desk. Oh. <laughs> and they were all these, and I'm reading them thinking, he's really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> all the scripts that John had written had to do with les you know, les lesbians. You said that Pope was a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, those 40 year old white heterosexual men are. <laughs> Um, who put rat sack in Marlon Warren's barley water? Who wouldn't? Oh. <laughs> Edna Pearson did. Yeah, she was very arsenic and old lace if you managed to um, be anywhere but Victoria in 1984 to see those episodes. Very good as Mrs. Mingo. Now, what was the name of the pizza parlour that Susie Driscoll got work at? The Chuck Wagon. The Chuck Wagon. <laughs> <laughs> That's bizarre. <laughs> Whose final words were bloody bastards? Frank, Frank, Frank. Correct. Who was Who got that? Rachel. 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 Mouse was a nickname. What was her full name? Oh. Yeah, we've got it now. Yeah. We'll go on to nicknames. Oh, there's one more question. What was her real name? Yeah. Mouse Oh, right. Jenta, Jenta. 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 What was your name? Christine. Christine got it. Christine. 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 Do you want me to keep going? Yeah. Um, yes. We'll go on to nicknames. Whose nickname was Looney? No. Oh, that was like a draw. Connor. Oh, no. Mel Jones. Mel Jones. Whose nickname was Weasel? Phyllis Hunt. Phyllis Hunt. Is that true, Ray? Who was called the Big Red? B. Who was it? Whose nickname was uh, well, what was the real name of Spider? Ray Simpson. Ray Simpson is correct. Title Strap. Okay. Correct. What was Brumby Tucker's real name? Michelle. Michelle is correct. Cheryl. Correct. Sorry. Sorry. I don't know who played that. I love you. She did a What was Julie Egbert's nickname? Chuck. 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 Chris Daniels. And what was the real name of Rabbit? Marlene Warren. Marlene Warren is correct. Which actress received a standing ovation at the Logie Awards when she won Best Actress for Prisoner? 
Now this is a standing up, it's very rare. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Sorry? No, everyone cried when she won the award. Carol Burns is correct. So in 1980, she won best, what was the popular vote? It was best lead actress, the Silver Lady, and um, she got a standing ovation. And she was only in the 20 episodes. And that year, best new talent was a wonderful actress called Vera Levy. Do you know Vera? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you know yeah. 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 Going down with Tracy Mays. With, yeah, Mercy. And um, she should have been in the show as well, but she Anna, tragically passed Tracy. away. You know Tracy, don't you? Anna? Tracy, oh, yeah. Yeah. And Vera. And Vera. And Sasuke. <coughs> was she a prisoner? No. No, a lot of them were, a lot of them were working on Sons and Daughters. But Daniel Walsh wasn't in Prisoner either. No, a lot of them. No, that was Shanta Hakaturu. Um, whose nickname was... Um, look, I'm going to tell a quick story. When I was in high school, um, we had... You know how you get a substitute teacher, or a CRT, or whatever they're called, and all the kids would be watching Prisoner. And the next, because of course we saw the, the screws at, as the teachers, and there was the headmaster, that was Eric, yeah. and we were the prisoners, and we had lockers <laughs> where we'd sell cigarettes <laughs> to each other, and all that sort of stuff. And kids used to have their collars turned up like Brett Keane, and it yeah. yeah. It was ridiculous. <laughs> We'd actually call the teachers screws, or screw up there. <laughs> and um, anyway, we've got to see a CRT one day, and I'm so going to get cancelled. And, um, and. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are growing. <laughs> and this is my food. So, and it's because the CRT is just going. <laughs> and your name? I'm Nick Marcus. Did it? And you went to a elite private school, did you? No, 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 that was not public, but it was like pretty. But they all did that sort of thing. Nice. We all well, did you run? No, that's what the following of that has happened. So back in 1975 at primary school, did you run through the school and go, there's a bomb in the building, there's a bomb in the building, everybody out! Oh, well I did, but anyway. Um, so, anyway, look, I can't think of any more off the top of my head, but um, that's all for the quiz today. Who's the winner, Phil? Oh, you want me to kill Okay, so how many of you, I'm going to give myself a little quick plug and talk here, how many of you have seen our latest series, Celebrity House Cleaner? on YouTube a little bit, which stars um, Ray Pierce, Babs, as well as Chantal Conturi, Carla Bonner, who else is in it? Uh, Jude Curie makes an appearance. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, so basically it's about a, uh, a cleaner who cleans for celebrities and Chantal Conturi plays the actor's agent who gets him the jobs. And so we've just released it on YouTube. So what we need you guys to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel. I know you've all subscribed to Dr. Prisoners and you've got YouTube accounts. Please subscribe because we want to do a season two. And we want to give these good guys work as well. Because we've got a budget happening and, you know, people say to me, I see all your films and I watch Karate Boys and this and that. And there's so many prisoner actors in them. A couple of you have asked me today, well, it's very hard finding an actress who's... 40 plus who act in Melbourne who actually wasn't in the show. So, and it's good to see them. And when we did Baroni Boys with Elspeth Ballantyne playing um, the Bogan mother, she said, Thank you, darling. I'm finally playing a role that's not like her. And I said, <laughs> I said Who's her? She goes, Oh, Meg, whatever her name was. And I said, Oh, she goes, oh. I said, You're finally playing Lizzie. She goes, Yes. And she's, um, you know, playing a wheelchair bound. And if you've seen the series sequel, Brainy Backpackers, you'll see Raylene and Elspeth making their own home brew <laughs> and getting arrested and doing all sorts of stuff. So please subscribe. If you could all take out your phones now, hit the subscribe button and you'll see the magic happen, I think. And just before we wrap up, um, we're going to do a big group photo for all the cast that stay there for a moment and the fans. We're going to announce the winner? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to tally it up. That's why I was just spooky. We have tallied up. We've tallied up, darling. There will be no argument. No. <laughs> the winner and new queen of prisoner is Hayden. Hayden, uh, if you'd like to come up so you can be crowned prisoner queen of 2020 2023. And, um, 
Ted Douglas is going to give you a hamper and a gift, which is by your your old legs. Oh, there it is. Hey, hey. I've got to ring you and find out how for my life, because you know what I don't. Congratulations. Well done, congratulations, mate, and you want that sloppy kiss from Jude Curran? Ah, uh, perhaps. Because she does so. <laughs> she kisses with another one. you've got to keep the people who are following us. Look after them. Um, some of them are idiots, of course, because you've got to be a little bit mad to be an actor. You do. My doctor told me that. <laughs> so look after them and uh, just say hello to them when they're in the street. Okay? Thank you so much. When we think back, I mean, we've, we have so many memories, all of which are good, some of which, you know, could be improved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at you, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> oh. I haven't but, you improved this. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> some of the stuff you wrote for me to do, I tell you what. <laughs> Listen, that's, enough, that's another meeting. <laughs> it's been wonderful to share time with you. All we can ask for in what is a difficult time for our industry is that you continue to support our content made here. We need to know that we have your support. You're why we do it. We're grateful for that. We appreciate how you feed back to us about the joy and pleasure and what we give to you is what you give back to us. So keep on doing it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. When Matt first asked me to be on Talking Quiz, I said, no one's going to remember the film. <laughs> and even talking to Louise today, you have this imposter syndrome where you think, oh, I really shouldn't be here and they're going to find out about me soon. But um, it's very nice that you all remember and it's very welcoming and it's lovely and thank you. Welcome, my heart. Thank you all for coming. It's been an amazing afternoon. Just a few more thank yous. Thank you to Tim for putting that. Oh, yeah. 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 
I wish I could again But that was on the outside And things were different then We built our world together Sharing all the love we'd known Till I had to face the nightmare of Waking up alone On the inside the sun still shines And the rain falls down But the sun and rain are prisoners too Face the nightmare of waking up alone on the inside the sun still shines and the rain falls down but the sun and rain are prisoners too. On the inside the roses grow They don't mind the stone ground But the roses here are prisoners too I could again But that was on the outside And things were different then 